Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Uh, I, I first wanted to thank the organizers of the conference. I think this has been a really interesting conference. I didn't get to hear all the talks yesterday, but most of the afternoon talks, and it, it really fascinating, I think. So um, I've always thought about failure, kind of in the back of my mind throughout my research career. And that's because I study metacognition. Metacognition, for those of you who don't know, it's basically a skill that we feel all humans have, and even some non-human animals, right? So it's a skill that allows us to self-reflect. And the, the reason we have a self-reflection process is because sometimes we know things, and sometimes we don't know things, right? If we didn't ever not know things, we wouldn't need to have metacognition, we wouldn't need to self-reflect because we would know everything, right? So failure, in a sense, is a necessity just to have metacognitive processes, right? To have self-reflective processes. So I entitled my talk today, Illusory Failure, and hopefully this will become clearer throughout the talk. I wanted to start with a quote. It's a kind of funny quote, but it's also sad. Thinking is the hardest thing a man can do, probably the reason so few of them do it. Okay, and here's a kind of comical example of this in a cartoon. You're asked, how are you doing? And instead of thinking on your own, right, why risk potential failure, you say, how am I? I don't know, let me check Google. Okay, and so in today's day and age, we actually don't have many opportunities to fail, right, because all the answers are really at our fingertips. And when I say all the answers, I actually don't care whether they're correct or incorrect. They are answers. And often we take them as correct, right, on the internet. So more seriously, if we take the context of learning, this is also a funny cartoon that I found on the internet. I want you to kind of have you focus on those three letters, WTF, right, WTF. And this is something that we all understand. And it's a sad thing, but we understand that at the beginning of learning, this is one particular example of a learning curve. But at the beginning of learning, when presumably learning is the most difficult or takes the most time, or you could be going through this kind of failure events or incidences, right? It leads to curses, right? There's something very aversive about putting in effort putting in time. And just as kind of a everyday note, which many of you experience, and it, it, it's actually the saddest part of this story, is that the first purple dotted line, most people don't even get there, right? Before we get there, and I'm talking about adults, I'm talking about parents and teachers who look at a child, and they're still in the WTF part, and they say to the child or to others, yeah, this kid's not cut out for this, right? They haven't even allowed the learning curve to occur, right? It hasn't gotten to the point where there is going to be potential learning that is evidenced, manifested in some type of performance, okay? So the thing that I wanna talk about today is really when you talk about the learning and failure, people talk often about failure after they've learned something and then they're tested on it and oops, they failed. But the problem that I wanna kind of focus on is that we don't even allow people to finish the learning process, okay? And going back to Bob Siegler's talk, you know, when you talk about school activities where often it's obligatory, we have to actually learn some of these things. That's where I've been focused on, really in education where kids are required to learn particular things that are difficult at the beginning and they're not allowed to finish the learning curve. So just to make things very clear, here are two examples of learning curve that I've looked at in the past. On the left, this seems to be this kind of diminishing returns curve. This, this seems to be the curve that adults are looking for. And that's not fair, because on the right, that's much more common when you're talking about learning something that's new, completely novel. There is going to be this period of time where you're going through some mini failures, right? Some uncertainties, some confusion. 
But we're talking about, okay, why is it that adults are looking for this very quick and manifested type of performance, okay? So that's the issue. And the other issue, I'm going to go back to this WTF period. Um, this period of time, I'm not really interested in actually failure at the long term, right, after you've learned something. I'm going to focus on this particular period of time and say that this is the most devastating period. And not that kids are going to be failing at a particular task, but basically they're actually learning to lose confidence. Okay, so here's an experiment that we did. Um, we did an experiment testing third graders, third graders in a local public school in New York City. And uh, we gave them all text passages to read, like this, okay? And they were all age appropriate, so they, they read the passages. After the passage was read, uh, all the students were asked a metacognitive question. Simply, how do you judge your comprehension of this text passage? How confident are you that you've understood the passage? Okay, and this was, this was recorded on a scale of one to six, six being the most confident. In particular passages though, what we did was manipulate simply effort, okay? So some passages, hopefully it's more effortful for you to even read it, okay? We gave, again, third grade appropriate passages, but it took more effort to read, it took more effort, but they could still read it eventually. It took more effort and time. Okay, and then we still asked, how confident are you that you've comprehended this passage? Once they made that judgment, then they got, all got a multiple choice test. Okay, and the multiple choice tests were on the passages. I wanna tell you one thing to get, again, get this out of the way. There was no difference in actual performance, right? So when they take the multiple choice test, they all understood the passages. That's true fact. The other thing that we did after the experiment was done is that we asked, we, uh, we divided the students into incremental and entity theorists, right? And hopefully most of you know what that is, what those are, okay? And I got it, okay? So there's no difference in actual memory performance. But if you go back now and look at the judgment of comprehension, this is again, this is getting at the confidence level of the child, okay? Here's what we find. We found that over here with the clear, okay, people are fairly confident. This is the confident, mean confidence score. People are very confident that they've understood the passage. If you look at incremental theorists, which is the gray line going across the top, there's no difference whether the passage was clear or unclear, which took more effort. But if you look at the entity theorists, you see this kind of plunging confidence. Again, they didn't even fail yet. They didn't even take the test. And th when they took the test, they did not fail. Okay? So nobody actually failed. This demonstrated an illusion of failure. So it really starts before you even take the test. Before you even learn, you're already kind of decreasing in some type of confidence. Okay, so ironically, failure occurs way before failure can even occur. And the real problem seems to be that exerting effort leads to some type of confidence plunge, at least for some groups. And you can imagine it might not only be for these particular third grade entity theorists, right? It's a much more generalized problem. So the solution, like many have said before, is to redefine effort as some type of confidence booster. This is much easier said than done, of course, and I just want to talk about one study that we've kind of started to address this particular belief that's a mistaken belief. Everybody knows, this is all over the internet, that failure is good for success. There is some type of success in failure, but this is not advertised in schools, in the classrooms. So children do not know this, and instead, going back to WTF, they're hearing more and more, because they haven't gotten to the purple dotted line yet, they're hearing more and more, yeah, you're not cut out for this, just quit. Okay, and, that, and that's the real issue. They're not hearing anything about failure being a stepping stone to success, okay? And they're not, they're not ready. They don't think that right around the corner you see that steep rate in the curve. 
Okay, so in this particular experiment, we tested ninth graders, and we focused here on science, except it was a little different because it wasn't solving science problems, but it was still in the domain of science just to get kind of the most lack of confidence, right, in the STEM. So these are ninth grade biology students in the Bronx, and we first started with a particular condition that showed that they would be studying the way they would spontaneously study. So example, right, allergy, an immune reaction to a normally harmless substance. They have to learn a bunch of these types of definitions for biology. What we imagine that they would do is they would think to themselves, okay, how much time, more time do I need to spend studying this particular topic, this item? And they had three choices, no more time, a little more time, or a lot more time. And then we actually gave them more time to study. Okay, and there were 13 different uh, concepts that they had to learn for the test, and they had a test much later. But the test, again, is not interesting for me. Okay, it's again, what can we do to change how they feel during the learning process? So what we find here is that if we just do this particular spontaneous condition, they basically just stop studying. And they say, none, I don't need to study anymore. Okay, so the question is, getting them comfortable, and Bob, you talked about kind of saying, show the bastards. Here, the point is for the child to say, show myself, that I can get over this, right? And without anything terrible happening. So what we did very simply is we, very, uh, at the very beginning of the learning, we just inserted a phase where they had to actually think about potential failure. And the way we did this is say, simply, in metacognitive judgment, how confident are you that you will remember this on a later test? Students are very good at knowing that, they, that memories decay. So if you ask them, how well do you think you're gonna remember this on a later test, all of a sudden they know, ooh, I'm gonna, I might forget it. Okay, so that, that was the goal. And then we simply asked them again the same questions, how much more do you want to study? And then we gave them study time and then a test. And I have zero minutes left, hold on. Basically, we had half the people do this kind of betting. They can bet for points. So it was also a fun game, right? It wasn't aversive at all, and they actually enjoyed doing this. So we had betters and we had non-betters. Here's what we find. If you look at the no-betters first, we did this twice with two different ninth grade groups, you see that the black bar, that's the no more study. That's what they're doing. They're saying, no, I don't need to study anymore. But if you just insert a little more awareness into, okay, could you, might you forget this, you see this shift. They're more likely to say, I need a little more study or I need a lot more study. So basically making prospective judgments, a very simple paradigm in education, makes them aware of potential failure, nothing bad or terrible has happened, and it gives them control. Them the control to say, okay, I intend to study more, and that's what they did, okay? So take home points, avoiding failure is easier than ever because of the internet. More exertion of effort seems to equal failure in the form of decreased confidence. We need to find ways to encourage children and adults to get rid of this damaging and untrue belief. The first step is to find ways to encourage effort that is not yet a tragedy. No failing has actually occurred, right? And hopefully increasing awareness that in reality nothing terrible has happened and you are in the control of your own learning curve. Thanks.